Hey what's up guys and welcome back to another League of Legends guide video and in today's guide we're going to be looking over Zed. Now Zed is a champion that a lot of people are going to be playing around this meta or around in season 8 as well or pretty much all the time because Zed is a very dominant mid laner who is an assassin and is not very easy to play but he pretty he just takes a little bit of time to you know get used to. So that's why I'm going to be here today to show you how to play Zed, how to get over all of the basics of him and to be honest it, it won't get that difficult once you learn everything about him and that's what I'm going to be here for and I'll jump straight to the abilities then I will explain the rest that you guys need to know about Zed and then I will give you my recommendations and my conclusion. So let's look over at Zed's abilities, starting off with his passive, Contempt for the Weak. Zed's basic attacks against targets below 50% maximum health deals 6-10% to of the maximum health as magic damage. Contempt for the Weak can only affect the same target once every few seconds. This is what makes Zed a very good farmer on lane. It also helps him farm under tower and it also helps burst enemy champions with your auto attack. Now we're looking at Zed's Q which is Razor Shuriken. Zed and his shadows throw their spinning blades forward, each dealing physical damage to all enemies they pass through, reduced to 60% against units beyond the first. Which is why when you're on the laning phase, you wanna also, you wanna always land your Q on the enemy when there's no minions in front of them because you wanna get the full damage off early game as well. Now we'll look at Zed's W which is Living Shadow. Zed's shadow dashes forward, remaining in place for 5 seconds and being able to mimic Razor Shuriken and Shadow Slash while within 1950 units of each other. Zed restores energy whenever a shadow lands a mimicked ability on the same target he does. This may only happen once per ability cast. Zed's second cast just switches places with the shadow. You can use this to escape or engage on the enemy. Then we'll look at Zed's E which is Shadow Slash. Zed and his slash deals physical damage to surrounding enemies. This does not interrupt Zed's previous orders though. Enemies hit by Shadow Slashes that are from the shadow are slowed for by 1.5 seconds. Enemies hit by multiple slashes take no additional damage but instead are slowed by 50% stronger slows. Each enemy champion hit by Zed's slash reduces Living Shadow's cooldown by 2 seconds. And these abilities are going to be the 3 main abilities for Zed that you're going to be using for comboing and you need to have all of these abilities for you to use them at their full potential. Now we'll look at Zed's ultimate which is Death Mark. Zed vanishes for 0.75 seconds during which he goes through the target enemy champion marking them becoming ghosted for 3 seconds and spawning a shadow at the casted location, which lasts for 6 seconds. After 0.5 seconds of reappearance, he can activate Deathmark Shadow for the next 3 seconds. The mark stores a percentage of all pre-mitigation, physical, and magic damage Zed deals to the target, detonating at the end of the duration to deal physical damage. For the next 3 seconds, the mark stores a percentage of all pre-mitigation, physical, and magic damage Zed deals to the target detonating at the end of the duration to deal physical damage. Zed's recast is he just goes back to the shadow regardless of the distance, which works pretty much like W, but with W you have to be in a certain amount of range to actually recast it, but with R, uh, you don't have to be in range, you could be anywhere you want and you can recast the ultimate. And last but not least, Zed does have an extensive passive that actually does work with his ultimate, which is called Reaper of Shadows, scoring a takedown on a marked target or with the detonation of the mark permanently grants Zed bonus attack damage. This bonus gets replaced if Zed takes a bigger value target with death mark if it's not on cooldown. Targets who will increase their bonus are marked with a shuriken above their head with larger shurikens giving larger bonuses. So this really means that the more bonus AD that an enemy has uh, you can actually use your ultimate, you can either kill them with your ultimate, or you just kill the marked target with a big shuriken on their head. Regardless, you're going to get a bonus off them, and these bonuses actually don't stack. There actually is a misconception that people think that Zed's passive of Reaper of Shadows does stack. You only get the amount of stacks, but they do not stack up together, if you get what I'm saying. So, what happens is, after you steal a percentage of an enemy's AD, and if you want to go steal someone else's AD, you get a let's say they got a shuriken on their head and you want to take theirs what's going to happen is it's going to replace the ad you stole from them with the ad that you previously had it's not going to stack on top you need to get that correct because a lot of people are having a misconception with that they do not stack it just replaces it with the new bonus you have so now that we've got that clear now we can just talk about zed and his abilities so zed utilizes his abilities using his shadows as well and he uses this early in the game and that's where zed pretty much pops off so when you're on the laning phase level one and two you want to look to actually you know poke at your enemy you know start farming as well you don't want to go all in you don't want to go crazy like you want to kind of keep as much health 
health as you can because you want to engage as much as you can as soon as you unlock level 3, which is going to be your first power spike. Now, when it comes to unlocking abilities, a lot of people, yes, you start with Q. Okay, that's the first thing. And now is just the confusing part about going E or Q. Lots of people, challengers and diamonds have said go E as well. But and then there's a bunch of people that say go W. But to be honest, it's all about personal preference. It's all about who you're laning against. In my opinion, it's all about who you lane against. So if there is, if you're really afraid of a cheese gank, let's say a, a Twitch is going to come straight to your lane and you know it, you could unlock W or you could just play safe and go E. But you can use W to use your WQ combo and then recast your W and auto attack them to get electrocute proc. Just remember that you won't get any slows and you've already used your W. So if anyone comes to gank, you're already going to die. And and when you have your E second, that also helps you secure your farm. But also if they, the enemy engages on you, it helps you do more damage towards them. But it's nice to have to keep up your farm. It's nice for farm securing whenever you're about to miss a minion. Your E is very instant. It will give you back. Uh, well, it will pretty much give you the minion and you will not miss it as long as you have your E. So having Q and E just assures that you will not miss a minion. But having Q and W just means that you will be using abilities to hurt enemies more rather than having to secure farm. And then Zed's next power spike is when he gets his ultimate, which is used for executing and using and getting up the stacks and everything. Zed's ulti is usually used to execute enemies and so you can get your AD bonus after you steal the AD from an enemy. And it's used to pretty much gap close onto the enemy and latch onto them, but you also use your ultimate and your abilities and your W shadow to all- you gotta combine all your abilities together just so you can get maximum damage off. Because all of the abilities that Zed have, every single one of them correspond and they also cooperate together so you got to use everything that you can depending on what situation and sometimes you could just carry less you don't have to use every single ability you just got to use the ones that are necessary because you can always save some for later so now we'll just have a quick skim through zed's runes and you're likely going to want to go for a generic assassin kind of rune page and here's one example where you go electrocute sudden impact eyeball collection and ravenous hunter and then you go to precision you get coop and triumph and picking electrocute is for obvious reasons w e and q which is going to be your first combo which i will show you later as well will help you proc electrocute really fast using sudden impact is you is really useful for when you're blinking to your other shadow and attacking an enemy whenever you're using your w again to recast to auto attack at the other side it will give you more lethality and magic penetration which is is really nice to have eyeball collection is just additional and it gives you extra ad after taking down wards or enemy champions and when it comes to the last rune when it comes to bounty hunter stacks i'd say this is down to personal preference you can always go ravenous hunter if you're going up uh, against uh, someone you need to sustain against, but you can also go Relentless Hunter if you're up for roaming, or you can go Ultimate Hunter if you want your ultimate back a lot, but I'd say most likely you should go for Ravenous Hunter, but otherwise situationally you can go the others. Some people actually take Sorcery second on Zed, and they take either Nullifying Orb and Scorch, or something else because normally people go nullifying orb whenever they have a very very resilient kind of ap kind of champion going against them so that can also be situational but this is mainly the core kind of runes that you go on zed but there are many other recommendations that you could go check out as well that are on many sites and everything else but if you guys do need any tips on that you can also drop it down in the comments and i will reply to that so now that runes have been covered i'm just gonna throw you guys bills that are just gonna help you throughout when you're playing zed now here's just a build panel right over here so the first top line is your core items that you're going to most likely always going to need on zed your second line is your situational items and the uh, boots is just you, you're gonna have to either go ninja tabby or mercury treads you can go any other boots but i really do highly prefer going mercury treads or ninja tabby because zed is really really squishy and he's, he's not that hard to kill sometimes so i think it's best to always go one of the boots that are going to help you so if they have an ap champion or someone that has a lot of cc you want to go for mercury treads or you want to go ninja tabby otherwise if they have a lot of ad or if they have a lot of auto attacking champion when you're starting off you always want to go start off with a long sword uh, three potions or refillable potion start you want to build that into a serrated dirk and after getting that you want to build that into a dusk blade getting boots probably Probably after you're serrated if you really want to unless you want to rush for damage you want to go straight to dust blade now the only time you really go for dust blade if is if you don't want to escape from the enemy you want to you want to really go gap close in and you want to all in 
You want to really go for Yumus only when your enemy champion has a lot of mobility. You can use Yumus to catch up to them and it's really good for escaping as well. But having Dustblade, you can proc that as many times as you want as long as you're out of sight for a whole second and you can come back to lane and you can proc that quite a few times and that's why it's pretty damn strong on Zed. Like after using WEQ combo and then returning back to your W, the Dustblade proc really does leave off an immense amount of damage. Death Dance is pretty much a lot of, pe a lot of people's preference when uh, going towards the late game. Guardian Angel is very crucial because late game Zed's not gonna be that hard to kill after your enemies all uh, clump together. They all come together as a team and they will sometimes more likely want to go focus you. Black Cleaver is to keep that extra sustain so you can have more health and so you can chunk down people so you, want, so you can reduce their armor and everything because using Zed's combo really does help proc Black Cleaver like really fast. Now on the second line, you got all these situational items. You want to go Edge of Night if you really need a spell shield. They've got a lot of abilities that you need to block. I think Edge of Night would be a nice one, especially for looking for an engage because it's not easy to engage a Zed late game when they have a pretty decent team that are clumped together. And mortal reminder, after getting a uh, first when you get Executioner's Calling, I'd say this is most recommended if they have a really, really badly like, like healing, like not bad in as in like for them i mean bad for you like if they're healing like crazy i'd say th a great example would be if you were fighting against a vladimir you would go mortal reminder or if or if you were going against a fiora basically a champion that heals a lot that you need to stop them from healing you you want to you want to out sustain them that's that's your job you want to really kill everyone as soon as you can and Zed's not a champion that will like 5v1. He will always be a champion to pick off people. And you can you can 2v1, 3v1, no problem. As long as you know how to use him. And it's just, you gotta be careful with him. And he's more of the type of person to execute, get out of there, and come back once your energy's back, or just to stay out. You can use Merc Scimitar because of the QSS active to escape any CC that you normally get into. Maw of Malmordius is something I really do always build on Zed after getting a Hex Drinker because Hex Drinker is so beautiful on Zed as well because whenever there's a champion that's just really crazily doing AP damage, Hex Drinker is going to be beautiful. So if you have an enemy champion that's really out damaging you, regardless of you having serrated Dirk, you want to get that Hex Drinker before you even build anything else because that will save your life so many times. Lord Dominic's regard is really useful for when you want to just penetrate a bunch of people with armor. This is normally good against tanks, but with Zed, you're likely not going to always go for the tanks first. They're like your last resort kind of people unless they're very low unless you can actually go kill them you want to really go for the squishy people and people that are a big threat to the team rather than having to kill the tank but it's really nice to pop adcs way easier it will just pretty much ignore most of their armor it's it's really nice because it helps you preserve abilities and energy and then you could just keep going in on other people and then you'll be well sustained for the fights to come so that was pretty much the bills and if you guys want more information on the bills just make sure you drop it down in the comments and i will reply back to you guys about it so so now I will move over to the combos for the guide and for that we'll be switching over into the practice tool and I'll be showing you some of the combos and some recommendations. Alright, so now we've moved over to the practice tool and I'm going to be showing you some Z combos that you guys can do and it's mostly going to be Z combos that you will be normally using and ones that you can easily pick up and if you want to see any more advanced combos or anything or very very OP combos. Uh, you likely just want to go search some Zed combos, but this will pretty much give you some idea on how to build up to those combos as well. And there are a couple of combos here that are pretty advanced for you guys to do. So the most basic combo and the most easiest combo that everyone's going to know is WEQ, uh, which sends out your shadow, is the target, and you throw your shuriken. Now, I've already explained how all of these abilities work and what they do. So your W corresponds with your E and also your Q. So it will go, it will, your shadow will basically copy you and it will also uh, go towards the same target that you so desire. So it will do exactly what you're doing and it will also pretty much, yeah, go to wherever you want it to go. So when we have a target like this over here, what you're most likely going to do is WEQ, uh, which will proc your electrocute. That's the first most basic combo that will, uh, that you will do on the laning phase to 
proc your electrocute and probably dish down someone's health to half their health already at level three this is why as zed you most likely always go in at level three instead of level one and two because level one and two you're either going to unlock q and e or q and w which is still not going to be good enough for finding an enemy because once you get all three of the abilities you will be able to uh proc your electrocute a lot easier although it is possible to do that with q and w unlocked because you can always press w q and then return back to your shadow and then auto attack them to proc the electrocute but you need to be careful with that as well because you want to be you want to be more intimidating you want to get them that electrocute proc first before you go in for the auto attack uh, because of contempt for the weak, you're gonna get that. You're gonna get that juicy auto attack after it. So you're gonna go straight in like that, okay? So I was too fast, wasn't it? But don't worry, I'll explain it. So what you do is you do W E Q. Now the reason we do E Q instead of Q E or whatever you you guys think is because uh, E actually E on a normal Z does nothing but damage, flat damage, nothing else. Uh, but E from a shadow. So you see a shadow E right here. This shadow E right here, it will actually slow the enemy. Uh, so this has this dummy now has a slow effect, and the normal Z will never slow, but the shadow Z will always slow a target. This is why you press E. So you don't always have to instantly press W E Q. The reason that I'm instantly doing it is to catch the enemy off guard. So if you can land it properly and you know they won't avoid it or or anything like that and you know you've got them off guard that is when you do it but normally when you do we you can wait for them to reposition and then you can press q again and you can hit them for a lot so i can always do this and then i can hit the target up so yeah so it will slow the target so it gives you enough time to rethink where you're gonna cast your cues a lot of zeds actually wait for the uh, the enemy champion to actually move but they won't have like much they, they won't have like a lot of movement so you can just get them very easily so normally what you want to do is whenever you capture them in your weq successfully while procking your electric queue or as long as you got all of it done people return back to their shadow so you can auto attack the target again so you can do weq return back to the shadow and auto attack but we're gonna do that a little bit quicker so we're gonna do weq return auto attack um it will help if you have auto attacks on if you really want that if you if you're like a beginner Z, i'd say put on your auto attacks if you want that to proc so you could do weq and then auto attack mine are not on but it's it's kind of helpful it actually does automatically hit the champion for you so if you don't want to do it you got auto attacks doing it for you uh just a little helping hand so Zed doesn't really have many combos in an ability wise but he has many different combos Depend depending on how he, uh, he's positioned or how his enemy is positioned. You can be doing WEQ, but it's always worked differently and it's always corresponding with your ultimate as well. So I'll ex I'll explain that right now. So firstly, you got your you got your W, that's that stuff copies you. You also have your R shadow, uh, which also copies you, which is right over here. So whenever you press R, uh, I've already told you guys this, uh, you will make a shadow from where you last stood. And no matter how far you go from it, you can always return to it. However, from a W shadow, you cannot go to it as far as you want to. You have to be in range with it. So your R shadow, you can be as far as you want from it, and you can come back to it. W shadow, you can be as far as you want, but you cannot go back to it unless you're in the yellow zone, the yellow arrow zone. So, now that we got that cleared, uh, we're going to be looking at his ultimate combo, which just combines your W and your ultimate. So what your ultimate does is it just applies like a, a little a mark that's going to pop like that so we're gonna look at the triple q combo so a triple q combo is you want to set down a shadow set down your ultimate shadow as well and then you want to queue at the target make sure you get it right because your target's not going to be standing still unless they're stunned so you got to be careful about that so you can do r and then you could do w e q uh it will hit all of the uh, q's as well you want to try hitting all of your q's it will maximize your damage and the more damage you apply, the more damage your ulti pop is going to do. So that's why you need to do as much damage as you can from your abilities. Because the more you do from your abilities, while this thing is going off, while this is about to pop, the more damage you do, the more it's going to hurt. So watch this. So I'm going to ult. I'm not going to do any extra damage. And you're going to see the numbers. We got 130, 137. Now we're just going to spam abilities. We're on the practice tool. We're just going to break the rules a little bit. So we're just going to quickly... Do that. All right. 590 damage. So that's what I got. Now let's actually be fair and do what a normal Zed would. 
369. Okay. So the more damage you do to an enemy while the ultimate is on them, it will the pop will do more damage. So we've already done the triple Q combo. So what you can do is you can do W Shadow EQ. Uh, if you were actually going up against a tank or someone you wanted to finish off very quickly, well, you're not gonna go up against a tank anyways. Because as Zed, you're likely not gonna go up against a tank. So if you go up close and you press R and W, you can EQ because you can get all your shadows to hit the E on the enemy but you're likely not gonna hit any of the tanks you just want to go for squishy champions and try killing them and if if the tank is your last resort then go for it and go ahead and kill them they will press r they will go on the target and if they try to escape they will then place place the w where they will be going towards and then you could press eq over there as well because remember any of your shadows will be slowing the enemy it's not only your w shadow it's your ultimate shadow as well that will slow the enemy so what some people like to do is you could place your ulti shadow here, W shadow here. Whenever they're getting attacked by abilities or something, they can always return back to their W or their R. So you can always switch positions and confuse the enemy. So it's really good to use for 2v1s whenever you are really in a 2v1, even though these, these dummies are not going to hurt me. So you can always do this. You can always, let's just say this, this other dummy was going to hit me. I can dodge to this and then to this or the other way around. I was supposed to do that the other way around. So I could... Let's say this dummy was going to hit me. I can go back here and then I can go back here. It's always good to use your W shadow first because your W shadow has a range. Your R shadow does not have a range. You can go as far as you want and you could recast yourself back to it. Now for a pretty deadly combo that you can pull off is you can do W E Q return back to it. Auto attack it twice. Press alt press E Q. Was that confusing? It doesn't sound like it. So what you want to do is you want to do your W uh, you want to do your W E Q combo auto attack but also apply another auto attack on top of it so you have two auto attacks then you press r eq the reason i do that is because if i actually turn off these cooldowns and everything uh it will preserve the amount of energy i have the reason i auto attack twice is because i wait for the energy bar to refill this happens this is really good on stun targets it won't always work on a moving target because they will have or especially mobility targets so you can always auto attack and wait a little bit or just auto attack them and go in for the rest so you could do W E Q auto attack and then auto attack it again. Press R and then you press E Q. Uh, also, another thing about pressing E Q, uh, some people actually do Q E, which is actually uh, sometimes better because your Q has more of a delay than compared to your E. Your E is instant. Your Q has a bit of a delay before it actually goes out. So look, there's a, let's say a quarter of a second before it actually decides to spit out but e is instant so what you could do is you could place a shadow and go q e and when you do q e they're both instant they both combine together if i do eq it's a bit late so if i do eq it's a bit late but if i do q e i can do them really fast together it combines together which is really nice to do so you can do q e and it's always nice to do when you're ultiing as well uh you could do QE like that, which will also get your triple Q off as well. And that's how you do that. Whenever your target's running away, you could always press R, R, uh, no, W, W, and then R. Uh, and then it will bring. Okay, that kind of bugged out because of the practice tool. You don't get that many shadows, don't worry. Uh, three summoned, and that was not supposed to happen. So you see, W, W. Oh. Okay, that's why it's happening. It's the practice tool. All right. I'm just going to wait for these shadows to disappear. W, W, R. And then. That's how you catch up to an enemy. Normally people do this under the tower, but when you normally go under the tower, uh, not right there, and let's say we have an enemy right there. So what people do is whenever the enemy edge forward to around here-ish and you want to go for an all-in, not they won't always do it. If they're low, they know that Zed's going to do that. Uh, what you could do is you could press R and then place your W shadow, do whatever you want, come back using your R again, as long as it's out of the tower range that's for a safe return unless you want to all in uh you could like ww and then r around here ish and then whenever you want to make a return you can go back to your r and flash over the wall or flash out of the tower zone but there's also a titanic hydra combo that some people use as well which is weq going back into it pressing r pressing e titanic q uh because titanic just applies extra damage and it will be it, it, will, it will it's just an auto attack reset as well it will apply more damage to when you're ulting so w e q uh, and then you can press r e q no, not e q yeah <laughs> you could do e q and titanic as well uh nothing wrong with that 
it's just it's just the way you apply it. it's just you want to try popping everything off at once so let me try doing the triple q while i'm doing this so i could just uh titanic q uh, as well so as long as you apply titanic somewhere in between uh then then you're pretty much good to go so it's pretty much like it's really powerful as well so you want to uh, kind of get an auto attack first and then reset it with that so make sure when you're about to go for a titanic you want to auto attack first then titanic because look how fast it does it instead of auto attack auto attack you could do auto attack titanic which makes it very fast now this isn't really a combo but this is more of an illusion that you could do uh which actually puts off a bunch of enemies what you could do is basically pretend i'm a shadow right now and i'm going to throw another shadow just just imagine that okay so i'm going to actually do that but it's going to look like that but i'm not actually doing that so what i'm doing is i'm going to press w here and quickly going to press r on my target let's see if i can do it first time all right it wasn't fast enough but if i was slightly quicker it would look like this shadow just through this one uh this has actually been done like before and it looks really crazy yeah, look, now, if you paid attention to that shadow just then, it looked like I was throwing that shadow using this shadow. But that's just originally my R. But obviously, everyone knows that's just me ulting. But they will be confused because there's two shadows that just popped out really fast. So they'll be really confused. So if you do WR, they'll be very, very confused. So you can always return back to R and... Uh, no, yeah, your W and R, uh, which will really put off the enemy. And I've seen this being done for 3v1s and 2v1s. Uh, because it puts off enemies as well so they always do this they do their attack or whatever whenever they need to avoid they press w or r uh, they always do that to avoid um and it really does confuse enemies and there's nothing wrong with using your flash as well within these combos uh what people like to do is uh they do the wr again the attack use their w attack flash out come back in i don't know they do they do weird shit like that like come on you can do you can do so much with zed so if there's any other combos that I have missed out uh, or if you guys need me to explain, then go ahead and put it in the comment section below and uh, we'll talk more about them. So I'll just head back to the guide now. All right, so that was the combos for Zed. We've already gone over his abilities, runes and builds. And now we're just going to conclude off Zed. Now, if you guys want it more information that i've not explained within this video just go ahead and post it down in the comments and i will reply no matter what i will reply to what you guys have to say if you got if i've got anything that i've missed out you can always ask it in the comments section and i will always give you feedback just make sure you go in the comments and i will do that for you not very easy to play but does take a bit of time to learn and then you'll get used to him so anyways guys if you guys enjoyed this video please leave a like comment and subscribe if you guys want to see more guide videos like this then go ahead and post it down in the comment section below i've already been making guides that are going to be posted towards in the future i've already made some overlays and stuff and i'm going to be posting more and the guides will just be back up like they always used to be so anyways guys thanks for watching and i hope to see you guys in my next video peace guys and see ya